Hey y'all, and thank you for stopping by the channel. We're going to be talking about Kim Zoziak and her show, Don't Be Tardy for the Party. The episode I'm speaking of is Season 7, Episode 7, Lordy Lordy, Kim Me 40s. Okay, we're going to go right on into it. We're going to talk about Brielle and her on again, off again, living at home. Wasting money, living away from home, buying, a, well not buying, but a leasing an apartment and she's having her friends over. She's throwing parties there. When it comes down to laying her head on her pillow, she feels more comfortable under her mother and her stepfather, Croy, home. Okay, they don't call her, meaning Croy and Tim been seeing her sneak. Well, she ain't really sneaking because she got a key. And all the codes to the house. She's using the back door coming in though. And I guess from time to time, Cora and Kim look at their video surveillance uh, system and see what's going on from time to time. And they've been noticing on several occasions, pretty much every day I guess, Brielle leaving her place or residence and coming back over her mother's house uh, and Cora's house, the family home. And they're trying to figure out what in the heck is she doing? Why is she paying rent, wasting rent, uh, leasing a place, but yet she comes home and sleep with us every night, thinking we don't know. I guess she leave in the uh, middle of the morning before they get up or something. Who knows? But Brielle is definitely not ready to have her own spot. I don't know. Maybe she get a a decent boyfriend she can count on and some more friends that have it going on and they out on their own and doing the thing. A mentoring type friend she would probably need. Maybe a couple of years older than her, maybe several years older than her, but still able to float between both worlds as the early 20s as well as the late 20s. She needs somebody to take her under their wing and Show her that it's okay to live on your own and be sad sometimes. Uh, but you can't go home every night and you're paying money uh, on another place for the daytime hours, okay? I know that. I guess you use that uh, as a outside office she go to <laughs> for her peace and pleasure and for just to kick it back. Uh, with her friends and then do her YouTube stuff or social media stuff. From where most of her income comes from. Okay. But Kim and Corey they looking at her. They looking at her. Saying what is wrong with this child. Okay. Then we go where Bria calls herself shopping for her new place. Because the place that she's living in. It has a pump up bed. And a, a, a mattress with one. Uh, one mattress on the floor with some you know. What you call it, bedding on it, but it doesn't have like a real bed there. I mean, it's a one bedroom apartment, not that spacious, but it's just her. So I don't know, maybe she needs to look in getting a dog or something. Something uh, the apartment would let her have, whether it's a little miniature dog or a big size dog, you know, keep her company and keep security on tack, on point uh, for her. Uh, but she's shopping with her friend. He's kind of like throwing a little shade at her about what little she knows of bedroom furniture. You know, she just see the head post and she see the bed and she has not a clue for what an ottoman is. But the salesman kind of brief her and shows her what an ottoman is. And then her friend that she took with her um, shopping for the furniture, he, he just seems a little shady like... You know, you're an airhead. You didn't know this. You didn't know that. And I'm like, he just won't camera time. It seemed like a true friend wouldn't have been all over her by not, not knowing what Ottoman is. Okay? So, we leave Brielle because she's just doing what she needs to do. And when she does grow up a little better and become a little bit more mature, I'm sure she's going to be another Kim Kardashian running out there. You know, knowing how to brand herself. I guess where well, she gets that from her mom. Uh... Chris, so uh, we'll just wait and see on Brielle, okay? But anyway, she likes the camera. The camera favors her a lot, so 
beautiful girl, so she might can do something in social media, even if it's maybe being on a talk show or a radio, being a radio personality. Who knows where it may take her, okay? If Portia can do it, surely Brielle can. So we move on to um, Kim and her brother. They finally meet. They go out uh, to lunch with uh, her brother's wife and her brother and Corey's in tow. And they're talking here and there. And it seems like, I don't know what kind of brother she got. They need to stay away from each other a lot more. Uh, he says they hadn't seen each other since 2004, which equivalents to 14 years. Kim keeps saying 16 years, 20 years. She don't care, really. It, it, it's just, you know, unnecessary facts that she cares not to pinpoint. She says it is what it is, and that's where she's going to go. But her brother just keeps correcting her like he's a teacher, and he needs to swap her hand here and there when she makes a oops type of move. Ah, oh, but I'm like, why is he on this show? But I guess she has to have a storyline. Okay, but you know, the wife is kind of, her brother's wife is kind of shady too. You know, once she gets to, uh, you know, the talking, we're hearing a little bit from her at the table. She, they're comparing what their, their kids are doing. He's saying what his son is doing. He's going to a real prestigious school. He's going to be learning a lot in IT, I think it was. I'm not quite sure. But it sounds like it's some money in his future and a great career. And then uh, Kim and Samuel Brielle's doing well in social media and this, that, and the third. Then the brother and the, uh, his wife is like, okay, but what else is she doing besides social media? And that's the thing now, but that, you know, it's not going to be there for the longevity. But I'm like, he must don't know about social media. <laughs> These are self-made people. As long as she's staying ratchetness, entertainment, she'll do well. Okay? Uh, and he's like putting Kim kids down or Brielle down because he thinks she needs to be doing a little bit more. Excuse me. A little bit more than what she's giving everybody. Because social media, he feels here, gone tomorrow. You know, she needs to little need to have something a little bit more stable as far as educational wise and this that, and the third and Croy and Kim looking at him like are you stupid you don't come off on my kids I didn't come off on your kids where you going with this Brielle is my doll my first hey if I made it in reality tv and I was a registered nurse at one time had my education and everything but I ain't flaunting it I'm doing this reality TV because it's making me money. Much more than I could have made getting up, going to a mundane job every day, say, helping me say I'm saving lives and this, that, and the third. When I could be sitting at home having babies, meeting uh, entertainers of all, excuse me, walks of life, you know, and I'm, I'm living the best life. Now, where are you living? What are you doing? What do you have? Is your bank account matched to mine? I don't think so. So, she pretty much annoys, ignores what her brother and his wife is saying, and this, that, and the third. And she's talking about who she knows, which is Chipper Dale, and, you know, from Atlanta Braves. And he's like, you know Chipper, do you really know Chipper Dale? I'm like, he really hadn't caught on, Kim, that you're the it person. <laughs> At least in Atlanta, okay? And he, he, he must don't know you you have a circle of friends like that, because everybody want to be on TV. They don't want to be uh not relevant, even they're not playing the sport or in certain type of entertainment that they once were in, but just the thought of you knowing somebody that he want to meet and, and all his money and, and knowledge and all this, he ain't met no interesting people. So I'm like, you got one up on him again. And then, you know, the wife's trying to play all that. And I'm like, it don't even look like all that. She looks homie. And then she's going to try to come in your, come for you and yours. Kim had to really share her down in a polite way. And I was like, you're a fool. I was here for her. Like, again, look at me. Look at you. Look at what I got. What do you have again? You know, and all this is subject to materialistic things we're talking about, even with the education. Hey, you're here one day. You're gone tomorrow. Okay. We're all going to be parked in one residence where we're going to have to share the land. Okay. Anyway. Moving on from there, uh, it just seemed like they were kind of just envious of what Kim and Cora has instead of just like living in the moment. Go back behind closed doors and talk about them if you want to, but don't bite the hand that's feeding you right now, okay? 
don't bite the hand that's feeding you right now, giving you entertainment, letting you mix and mingle with people that you would probably never have met in your lifetime, if it not were for your sister Kim, okay? And uh, they're, they're making a uh, banter about each other here and there, but it is what it is. And Kim mentions while they're at the um, luncheon that they're partaking of at a restaurant, uh, Kim throws up. She sees this, uh, what do you call it, psychic. And he said, you still going to palm readers and this, that, and that. So Kim must have a, a, a longevity of seeing palm readers or, or um, psychics or whatnot. And Kim tried to play it off like, no, nah, she really out of God. The kids play grandma and this, that, and third. She just happens to be a psychic and whatever. She tells tells her brother how she was going to meet Croy and they're going to have children, this, that, and third, whatever. Okay, he wasn't interested. He kind of thought his sister was still a little nut. Um, it seems like his wife tooted up his nose, her nose at Kim as well. All right. So I was like, okay. Kim just goes on to say after they're leaving the restaurant and whatnot before she takes them back to their hotel. I'm like, good job. Don't let them stay with you. They'll find more ruckus and take pictures and, and, and start more junk behind your back. That's right. Keep them at the hotel. Okay. So before uh, them taking her brother and his wife back to the hotel, they stop by Chipper Jones' house and they have a little meet and greet uh, for a couple of minutes or whatnot. And even he still says some things to Chipper Jones that make Chipper Jones look like, are you stupid? <laughs> so I was like, oh boy, he's not looking good all the way around. The brother is not looking good. But anyway, um, we go on back to where Kim and Cora celebrating her 40th birthday party. It's a casino night. Even got the kids up in there. Uh, dress for the occasion. A few of them wouldn't, but it is what it is. And they got out these um, slot machines, and everybody was gambling, even the kids. But it was all fun, you know, all fun. There wasn't no real money being passed around, or it wasn't supposed to be anyway, because that's against the law. Okay, you can't open up a casino in your house. How much you finna gamble? No, no, no. That's that, you not know, go. Uh, uh, go on up the street, get you uh, what do you call it, a uh, uh, ticket, and play the lotto. That's free in Georgia, but just, you know, getting some slot machines and, and money that produces um, money coming out that you can win, real money, real greenbacks, real coins. No, you can't do that. <laughs> you have to have a license for that. So, anyway, it was all in good fun. She had a, a casino night celebrating her 40th birthday, and Everybody was in attendance that I guess she wanted to come. Everybody seemed like they were having fun. But, of course, the little um, two, <laughs> her brother and his wife don't come and throw salt in, you know, the wound or just more salty behavior. Um, the wife is going to mention to her husband, which is Kim's brother, that Brielle and Kim ain't got no clothes on. I say, you trying to show your little belly and your long old skirt and your little short crop top. It look like, like I ain't going to see your skin, okay? So give it a rest, all right? Give it a complete rest. You're in somebody else's home, hometown. And uh, they're trying to show you a good time, but you're just trying to be all petty and stuff. So I'd be glad when Kim says goodbye and I'll see you in another 16 to 20 years. <laughs> okay? Because it ain't going to work. It's just like everybody you get, Kim, around you, they just want to throw salt on you. But they want to be on TV sharing the spotlight with you. But, Lord, that was a trip. And let me see anything else I need to talk about. Um, oh, no, pretty much not at all. Um, nope, not really, because just talking about the chef uh, teaching the kids and trying to find out gossip, that really didn't concern me. And then, you know, I didn't like when Kim, one of her little kids, had said that the Spanish lady that was living with them or coming by the house every day teaching them Spanish was old. I was like, that little boy was rude, and he would have got a pop uh, on his backhand side. You just don't disrespect your elders like that. So, Kim, I think I need you to get on him about that, because that was quite rude. And then she's teaching 
your children a valuable second language, at least the, the twins anyway, how to speak Spanish. So they're going to be well above the game. So I'm like, shoot, all of y'all need to be partaking of the Espanol language, okay? So you can have something to speak when you go out, when you're traveling. Not depending on your two twins. And they probably don't even want to go with you when you go out traveling. So you're still going to be behind the times. Use your resources you have within your home, Kim. Talk some Espanol, some hola, como esta, usted, or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Get in there and talk with your kids. Learn that other language, honey. But anyway, Kim, too, too uh, busy being fabulous and, and, and right there for the cameras. <laughs> but at least she seems to have the right footing when it comes to those uh, twins trying to teach them something. Maybe she feel the other ones are just castaways. They they gonna have to learn on their own. But she's gonna at least teach these one, the the twins while they're young, very impressionable, and they can learn soak it up. You know, very knowledgeable of uh, the second language and how they're gonna use it as they grow older. And then maybe they could teach their siblings, their older siblings. Who knows how it might uh, ring out? Don't really care this time. But that's all I had on Lordy, 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 Season 7, Episode 7. They're celebrating Kim's 40th birthday party. And her brother and uh, the fiancé, well, the wife of his brother being so shady. I would not invite them back into another 14, 16, 20 years down the road. Because they need to learn their lesson. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. It's, you know, especially with just that mama. I'm sure they took care of the check and everything. They probably ate at a very nice restaurant. And then you got a chance to meet Chipper Jones on your sister's dime, okay? But it is what it is. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos. And I'll see you back for something soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.